Okay, I started to open this uh, with uh, my Mildred Payne uh, Oracle because they both came today and they're both from Deviant Moon, but I ended up babbling too much on that about that. I was so excited <laughs> that uh, it just became, uh, didn't make sense to continue to uh, try to merge the two together. Um, so I want to show you uh, this deck of cards that, <laughs> I love this. This is by, so y'all know Patrick Valenza from, most likely his most popular would be from the Deviant Moon Tarot. I purchased, uh, I think, yeah, I think I purchased the Deviant Moon Tarot to give it a try. Uh, I appreciated the art, but we really didn't get on in terms of a tarot deck, and I ended up trading that away. For my birthday, Miss Bella had given me the Triumph de la Luna, which is the Marseille-style deck, which I still need to do a walkthrough of. That I actually quite enjoy. It's very funny, has a, a, a very witty sensi sensibility about it that I actually really enjoy. It still has that kind of creep factor uh, from Deviant Moon or slightly off kilter factor but it also has a really great sense of humor um, so I quite enjoyed that and of course the Mildred Payne if you've watched the last video I don't know when these are how what order they're gonna go up in but even if you watch my original Mildred Payne Oracle um, walkthrough which I'll put a link to below as well as the Deviant Moon one um, I love the Mildred Payne so Miss Melissa a, uh, pa that told me that Pagan Claws was coming <laughs> which I thought pretty funny was pretty funny obviously I'm not going to share the whole note because that is personal uh, but she asked me if I had uh, purchased these cards yet or not. She's a big Mildred Payne fan as well. I think she's just a general Patrick Valenza fan and she quite loves these as well. I can already see they are up to no good. Uh, I also collect playing cards um, as well as tarot decks and I do read playing card with playing cards. Um, and so here we have the Royal Mischief playing cards, an unwholesome pack of dysfunction. <laughs> Uh, let's see what we have on the side. Created in the style of antique playing cards, the Royal Mischief deck delivers treacherous absurdity into your game. Idiotic jokers are included. Uh, so everything he does, I think, is just done with... Oh, I hate this because sometimes um, card decks are really hard to open. Oh, oh that's a card. Okay. Royal Mischief Transformation playing cards. Okay, it opens easier without that. Coming in, oh, that must be a new deck that he has coming out. <laughs> so I'm put that in my little collection of extra cards. Um, and so here we have the backs, which are really actually very cool. I love those. I love the sort of uh, beigey, uh, lid in color to the back. I would definitely want to do the same thing to the sides with uh, Windsor Newton sort of beige tone so that they all match because obviously the front has that beige tone too. We've got two um, jokers going on, one with the ever enjoyable, if you look at the full card of the <laughs> <laughs> the full card of the Triumph of De La Luna, you can see, and, and it's, the funny thing is, is that if you look at old decks of cards, tarot and otherwise, uh, they had quite the sense of humor uh, that I think that we don't think was the case. We kind of think everybody, I think, was walking around prim or proper, and prim all prim and proper. I'm like, have you read medieval literature I think <laughs> they were not all prim and proper uh, now I don't know if these are in order yes they are so we have beautiful you know standard pips but you know just beautifully done I love the little detailing here on the ace um, and then you have sort of standard but you can see they are meant to look sort of dirtied or antiqued um, you can see that there uh, on the face cards, uh, then the um, court cards, so the standard pip cards, but looking old, kind of antiqued. And then we have the court cards on this, uh, it looks like on all of them, the court cards are a lighter color. So that would certainly make them stand out um, as well. 
Um, but here you have uh, uh, the Jack getting his arm eaten off by a prom prana. The Queen of Diamonds uh, trimming her crazy, crazy-eyed <laughs> plants with her scissor hands. And the King of Diamonds pulling out his own eyeball. Uh, beautiful. I love the aces. Uh, again, standard clubs here. And we have the Jack of Clubs licking his knives. We have the beautiful Queen of Clubs with her bird uh, and her plant picked and bleeding. And she looks like she's got a uh, piranha for a cloak. And the Wily King of Clubs. You would think that all these knives would have been in the um, spades. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I love, again, love the aces. Here we have the jack of hearts chopping off heads. The queen of hearts uh, trying to do some raising of the dead, it appears like. And the King of Hearts definitely having a hard time from others uh, stabbing him in all different directions as well as stabbing him into his leg. <laughs> uh, we have the spades, beautiful spades. They often have uh, cards will have a, one of the aces sort of be uh, with the stamping um, here. And, you know, with the, the title or the name of whatever company it is that's doing it. So we have Deviant Moon Incorporated, New York, New York, 2017. And, of course, the standard. And then actually quite the cool, um, creepy Jack of Spades with the skulls and the Queen of Spades and the King of Spades being all skulls, which definitely, you know play into the realm of cardamancy. There is an uh, especially old style cardamancy. There wasn't a lot wonderful about either the, you know, getting clubs or spades. Sort of like spades are negative. Uh, clubs are problems. Uh, hearts are positive and diamonds are, you know, neutral positive <laughs> um, so especially even with yeses and nos you have nos for spades maybe no with the clubs where you have a yes for the hearts and a maybe yes for the diamonds <laughs> they shuffle beautifully it's great card stock for playing cards Shuffle really beautifully. For playing card readings, I generally always pull by sets of three. So whether it is just a three card or whether it is a six card with two rows of three or it's a nine card, those are generally how I'm always pulling playing cards. Yes and no's are great. Just looking at the colors, you can simply see this would be a yes, uh, just because we do have two hearts, which are very positive yes, and one no, so it would definitely not. Obviously, if it was three hearts or three reds, it would be a much stronger yes to it. I would still cause this, call this a yes, although maybe the yes, because we have the nine of spades here, it's possible the yes might, you know, you might get a yes, but it may not actually be the outcome that you want. Also, you can look at playing cards just in terms of color as being things going along pretty well, but we're gonna be taking a turn for the worse in the future, so you may want to take, you know, to sort to prepare for that. <laughs> so just in terms of looking at color and suits, you can gain a lot of uh, information without even reading the actual cards, which makes it real nice for clarifying things or just getting a quick feel of the situation 
foundation, right? So this would actually be a much more powerful yes. You've got three red cards. That's a clear yes. Uh, yes, we do have one diamond here, but in general, we still have a very strong yes going out and things probably working out pretty well with that yes and not really having to worry too much about it. Um, so and again, this is just me. Again, you can, you know, how people read yes and no with playing cards, um, you know, mileage may vary. Uh, this is interesting because we have definitely two black cards uh, here but we do have the red in the middle, so there may be a possibility of disrupting this no, right? So we do have a pretty solid no because we do have, you know, a spade, a spade and a and a, um, a wand and a club here. But because of this red card here, um, this would say to me that there, there's still a chance for shifting. I don't believe in a fixed future. So this would be that indication that you may want to look for a way to... Um, uh, a way to disrupt the snow. There may be a possibility of shifting this in the direction that you would want it to go in. Uh, you could also look at this just in terms of how things are going, things that might be difficult right now. Um, things are going to get better, but they're going to get worse again. <laughs> there may still be some difficulties ahead, but you're going to have a little bit of a period to take a breath and take a step back before having to continue the way that they're going. So, you know, again, this is not even getting into, you know, how to replaying cards or anything like that but just just to quickly scan or quickly ask those types of questions so maybe you've done a whole reading but you really want okay now getting down to the nitty-gritty you know this you can use something like playing cards is, is is really well known for that I only do anything that I would do for myself that has yes or no questions I only would use geomancy or playing cards um, that is for me the most the best way um, the most accurate way to get sort of um, a situation and what I like about playing cards uh, as well as geomancy but one of the one of the strong benefits uh, playing cards is that as I just showed you you do get more than just a yes and no you get do get some more information and you can go on to actually read the cards I'm just not going to really go you know not going there so here we see that the answer is probably yes however it's going to be a rocky start so we have a, a spade here and again we're not even we're not even and you know looking at the meanings of the cards we're just looking at the suits um, and, and where they're showing up here. So we, we have two reds, so that's uh, probably going to be a yes. It's not a solid yes because we don't have three reds, but it is probably going to be yes, but just be prepared that at the beginning it might be difficult, but it's going to, um, it will improve and most likely will shift to, um, shift to being the way things turning out the way that you want them to. Or in terms of a situation, if you're just looking at a progression, again, you're looking at things are going to be difficult um, but you are moving towards um, things being being good. So yeah, I just that's that's one of the the, the great I think advantages to uh, playing card reading just in terms of scanning without even reading the cards. Same thing that we saw here. We've got some probably going to be a no, but wiggle room for breaking, you know, for kind of breaking that up and changing the dynamics. And then you might actually want to go in and read the cards to see, or add, lay more cards down to see how you might be able to, you know, what's your best way to, to do that, to break, kind of break in and, and uh, shift uh, the way things are going, right? <laughs> so yeah, so these are a lot of fun. Again, it's got that cheeky, um, kind of cheeky horror, you know, like Shaun of the Dead or these kinds of things where it's, you know, it's definitely uh, the creep factor there, but uh, at the same time, um, it's cheeky and it kind of makes you grin. So I really wish that the court cards had been uh, all, so the, all of them were kind of this dirty look, but the benefit is, is it definitely stands out with the court cards. Um, 
there. So I will definitely be pulling this out uh, next Halloween for playing card readings uh, because I think it's it's beautiful. Uh, beautiful. His art is beautiful, right? It's just, it's not for everybody because it does have that uh, that kind of horror aspect to everything. Deviant Moon, definitely the Triumphal Day of Luna, even the Mildred Payne. Although the, the Mildred Payne, if you watch my video where I go through positive negative, you'll actually see is that skewed more towards positive cards and, and or really solidly ones that can go either way. So it's actually quite a balanced deck. Uh, of all of his decks, it's probably the least, yes, it has the creepy horror story as a background, but in terms of of reading, it's, it's a really balanced deck, or it's, it's a really great deck. So um, he can be not, his art is not for everybody. Um, and I, I never really got on with the Deviant Moon, uh, but these are a lot of fun and something to definitely add to my collection. So thank you very much, Miss Melissa. I hope you've enjoyed this quick little look. You know, playing cards decks are much quicker to take a peek at because um, most of them are pips, right? And you only have the three, three court cards in each. So it's a little bit of an easier, quicker take a peek at this. Um, if you love Patrick Valenza's artwork, I don't know if this is even still available, to be honest. Uh, you'll have to look that up. on. I'll put a link to his uh, website, but I don't really even know. So <laughs> there you have it. A little peek at the Royal Mischief Playing Cards, an unwholesome deck of dysfunction.